In this episode, I explain how emotional starvation is showing up in our lives and contributing to the root cause of depression, anxiety, and even physical ailments. I share four tips on how to navigate emotional starvation and work towards feeling fulfilled and abundant. Welcome to the Abundance Hack Show, a season four where we are focusing on mastery. The last three seasons, I gave you the information. Now we're focusing on integrating it into our lives and embodying it. If you are ready to master your thoughts, emotions, and patterns to feel whole, fulfilled, and really grounded in who you are without dimming your shine so you can live the abundant life that you truly desire, then you are in the right place. Hey, m ms Thank you for tuning in to the Abundance Hack Show. What are you manifesting in your life today? If you're joining me for the first time, although m ms are really yummy candies, it actually stands for magical manifestors because we manifest by default. We are manifesting with our thoughts, our emotions, our actions, the things that we are saying So if you are listening to this podcast, that means that you want to manifest a super juicy, yummy, abundant life. And today's topic, we are going to dive into something that I feel is standing in the way of us being fulfilled and living the abundant life that we desire. Okay. So let me be really honest with you. The last few days I have been in my feels. <laughs> there was a new moon eclipse and it brought a lot of things to the surface. A lot of people were feeling extremely triggered. And I know that an eclipse heightens the energy. And so when things are heightened, it tends to bring our stuff to the surface, the stuff that we have pushed in the back of the closet and swept under the rug, but it's a really beautiful opportunity to learn and heal once and for all, whatever it is that is still triggering you. So I had a situation that happened that really triggered me. And because I've done a ton of inner work, I've had therapy and coaching and sound therapy really helps me. I was able to pull myself out of that, that dark, low place pretty quickly. And in the process, I really dove into my triggers. So I believe that in our lifetime, we're meant to learn lessons. This time, space, and reality, this lifetime, I have certain lessons that I was sent here to learn in this lifetime, to learn, to grow and expand. And usually those lessons, you can identify what those lessons are according to your top three values. So it's an exercise that Brene Brown talks about in one of her books, identifying your top three values. So my top value is connection. And it's actually the area that I have struggled with the most. So we have three top values. So you'll have one value that is pretty attached to the lesson that you're meant to learn. And then you'll have a value that comes really easily to you. And then one that you just feel super strongly about. So I'll give you an example. Another one of my top values is expression, like creative expression. So obviously I'm someone who is very expressive and it comes very natural to me. I mean, obviously I have a podcast. (laughs) And if you know me, you know that I am all about creative expression through dance. I've owned two dance studios in my lifetime. So I'm all about expression. That is one of my top values. So that's the one that comes very natural to me, like like speaking, being in front of an, an audience, being on stage, communicating. Like These are things that come very natural to me. Now, the value that is attached to my lessons to learn in this lifetime is connection. So today's topic, I want to dive into emotional starvation. I believe we are emotionally starving. We are emotionally deprived. So what do I mean when I say we're emotionally starving? We're hungry for connection. We're hungry for love, support, and nurturing. So we have social media and technology that has connected us on the surface, but it's disconnected us in real life. We're not communicating how we used to, and we're more disconnected 
than ever. We're disconnected from our true selves and we're disconnected from others. And we are built for connection. Imagine trying to drive a car without gas. You're not going to get very far. You run out of gas, you're done. (laughs) The car is not working. Now with technology, they're engineering the need for gas out of vehicles. So they're making it so we don't need gas anymore. And the difference between a car and us is like we are human beings. We're not vehicles that that can be engineered to not need something, right? So you cannot engineer the need for connection out of us. We are human beings and trying to engineer the need for connection out of us is actually contributing to the issues that we have in our mental and emotional health. So really sit with that. Really sit with that. Brene Brown said, we cannot be more connected to others than we are to ourselves. So I invite you to think about how much time we actually dedicate to understanding our emotional landscape, to be able to communicate our needs and desires to others. So understanding your emotional landscape is you understanding what you actually need, what you actually desire. And I always invite my clients, I say this all the time, but I feel like I have to continue saying it because so many people are on autopilot we have to ask ourselves three times what we truly desire because there's going to be three layers. There's a layer that you were programmed from your parents to feel like you should want this. There's a layer of what society says you should want. And then there's a layer of what you feel you were worthy of. And self-worth is is a whole other topic. But if you believed you could have it anyway, like what is your ideal situation? I always ask people that question. What is your ideal situation? And sometimes people have not even thought about it. So it's like, how are you going to manifest that juicy, abundant life if you don't even know what it looks like? So it's really important for us to understand our emotional landscape. It's crucial for fulfillment and living an abundant life. So I've always felt strongly about this. And I always say, like, check on your strong friends because connection is one of my top values. So whenever I said, check on your strong friends, it basically was saying like me, (laughs) check on me. Like I need it because people see me as someone who's strong and who always has it together. They don't feel the need to check on me, but that is an assumption that people are making because of something like social media. We see people living these fabulous, glamorous lives on social media and they're hugging their friend or their partner or whatever. So we think, oh, we don't have to check on them, they're doing great, that is actually causing us behind closed doors, like outside of social media, to feel lonely and isolated. We feel more lonely and isolated than ever. So it's so important that we check on the people in our lives, we check on our loved ones, we check on our friends, we check on our coworkers and ask people, how are you doing? So if you haven't listened to my episode about a common phrase that's actually hindering connection, definitely go check that out. And this is this this is the the heightened version of that where I feel like we're in a society where we're more disconnected than ever. So I felt like I needed to dive deeper into this, especially with the new <laughs> especially with the new moon eclipse and me being so in my feels. So basically we have to we have to not only identify what we need and desire we have to also create space for the people in our lives to share with us what they need and desire so honoring what we need and also honoring what the people in our lives need. So I talk about this in episode 144, honoring your needs, getting really clear on what you need and desire and honoring it rather than convincing yourself that you don't need it because it's not being provided. So in that episode, I share a story about a zebra and a water hole. (laughs) 
<laughs> you have to listen to it just to understand. But if you haven't checked it out, definitely, definitely go check it out because it's a really powerful episode and honoring what you need and also creating space for what others need in your life. Okay, so how exactly does emotional starvation show up in our lives? It shows up as loneliness. It shows up as lovelessness. It's in lovelessness, I mean, where we don't feel we have the love that we need. We don't feel like we have the love that we desire. And again, going back to honoring your needs, not trying to convince yourself that you're okay without it, that's important because we're we're denying what we truly need. And that is self-betrayal. I talked about that in a previous episode as well. So being self-loyal and honoring the fact that like you want and desire and need love in your life. We're built for connection. So emotional starvation also shows up as depression, hopelessness, and isolation. So in relationships, emotional starvation can look like circumstances that bind a couple so tightly into responsibility that there's no available time for intimate connection or communication. So they may have playtime, like let's just say a family vacation, but they're such in parent mode that they don't actually give themselves time to connect. So this is a married couple with children. They're not actually giving themselves time to connect and because they have obligations of taking care of the family, a lot of times they go into that autopilot where they're just like going, 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 and they're ignoring their needs. So then for entrepreneurs, and I'm going to add in their healers, you feel like you have duties, you feel like you have a purpose, you feel like you have obligation, so you're actually ignoring your own needs and desires for the sake of your business, for the sake of serving, and for the sake of your purpose. So purpose is something that I feel so many people get caught up in where like I have to live my purpose and same thing with with entrepreneurs and business owners I have to focus on my business I have to focus on my business and what they're doing they get caught in this this monotony of go 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 hustle grind that they're not actually paying attention to what they need and what they desire and it causes a disconnect because what happens is we may feel like we need a break You need a break, but you have to keep going. Society is telling you, go, 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 push through the discomfort and hustle, grind. Like if you want to be successful, you have to check all the boxes. So you have to keep going. And so when your body is saying, I need a break and you ignore it, it creates a disconnect. It creates a disconnect. And so in order for you to, to, honor what you need, you have to connect back to your body. So it's, you guys, (laughs) it runs so deep and it's so important that people understand this concept because isolation is the number one thing that causes issues in mental and emotional health of entrepreneurs. And it is because we are starving emotionally. We are starving emotionally. So really paying attention to what it is that you need and desire, getting back into your body and being okay with being vulnerable. Now, I will say I did just complete the Dare to Lead certification with Brene Brown, but it is such powerful work and it clicked for me. So my my value, my top value has always been connection. And I've always felt so strongly about these topics and working with Brene Brown with her material and her research and her verbiage, it gave me the language to actually express these things that I felt all of this time. So it, it clicked and it made it, so many things made sense. So that's why I'm a huge Brene Brown fan. Like I I love the work that she's doing because she's speaking to the things that I value, which is connection. What do you need to feel and operate your best? What do you truly desire? Honor what you need and desire. Your feelings are valid. 
Your desires are valid. You are worthy of what you truly desire. You are a sovereign being. You are worthy. You are enough. Society has convinced so many people that they don't need love and connection. They've actually started to believe it and then wonder why so many people are unfulfilled, unhappy, empty inside, feel like something's missing or in autopilot and don't even realize it. So how do we fix it? I have four ways that you can start to navigate emotional starvation. And I believe that it is going to be a ripple effect. If you start to implement some of these things in your life, it's going to positively impact the the others in your life. And it will just create a ripple of connection and love and support and nurturing. And that is what we want. That is what we need. All right, so number one is understanding your emotional landscape. So what do you truly desire? What do you need? What are your basic needs? And what is it that you desire? What is it that you truly, truly want? If you could have anything in the world, what is your ideal situation? You will not believe how many people I ask this to in my life and they don't have answers. If you ask me what I truly desire, oh, trust me. (laughs) Trust me, I can tell you because I have really gotten to know myself, the depths of my soul. And, you know, obviously there's always more layers to peel back. And every time we place ourselves in different situations and different opportunities, we learn more about ourselves. That's why I think traveling is so powerful because if you keep yourself in the same situation, then you're not learning parts of yourself that you would have never known as if you go to Italy. Italy is the first thing that came to my mind. But if you travel to Italy and understand their way of life in Venice, they're getting around by boat versus cars. Like you don't know these things about yourself, like what you like or don't like, unless you put yourself in different situations. So really understanding your own emotional landscape, what you like, what you don't like, what you're okay with, what you're not okay with, and like truly okay with not people pleasing and the programming. We're programmed to be a certain way, like a certain thing. But if you really peel those layers back and get away from the programming, the societal norms, what is it that you truly desire? And honoring that. So going back to episode 144 about honoring your needs to really just settle into like, this is who I am. This is what I want. And being unapologetic about that. So if you're having problems in that area, definitely reach out to me because we can do a chakra balancing session. If you have a blocked sacral chakra, for example, it's going to cause you to not be able to tap into your needs and desires. So if you're interested in that, definitely reach out to me. All right, number two is dissecting your limiting beliefs. Do you feel like asking for help makes you a burden? Do you believe that if you let people in your life know that you need support, they're going to think you're needy. I actually reached out to one of my friends today and I was just kind of sharing with her how I felt about friend friendships and like holding space and being needy. So I really don't like the term needy because it has a negative connotation to it. We are human beings and we're going to need things like period. Like we need to eat, we need air, we need we need connection. And so needy has a negative connotation to where people don't want to appear needy, but honoring your needs and desires without feeling like there's a negative stigma if you need something, you know? So if you let the people in your life know that you need support, if you ask for help, do you feel like you're being needy? Because if you have that, that, limiting belief or that feeling, it will prevent you from communicating your needs and desires. Do you believe that if you are focusing on business, 
you can't be in a relationship. So there's so much programming that says you can't have it all. Like you have to choose between business and a relationship. So do you subscribe to that belief to where you don't feel like you can run a business and be in a relationship? These are all limiting beliefs that will prevent you from having what you truly desire. So really lean into this. And a great way to do this is Byron Katie's The Work. So I actually go over this framework in episode 20. So it's four questions that helps you lean into your limiting beliefs and dissect them. This is really, really powerful. If you want to learn more about that process, you can go to episode 20. It's Dissecting Your Limiting Beliefs, Byron Katie's The Work. So Really understanding what your limiting beliefs are and dissecting them is a game changer. It will change your life. It will change your life. And I I do this now, like, like I said, I had a trigger recently and I really leaned into it and I'm like, okay, what's, what's the block here? What's the limiting belief? What am I meant to learn here? What am I meant to heal here? And that's why I was able to pull myself out of that space so quickly because sometimes we get wrapped up in our humanness and we go down these rabbit holes and trust me, I can go down a rabbit hole. (laughs) You go down this rabbit hole of negative thoughts and sometimes you can get swept up in it and, and can't pull yourself out unless you have these tools in your tool belt to be able to dissect it so you can see that like, okay, my humanness really just got the best of me because this is not even logical. Like there, there are some beliefs that we have, they're valid, they're valid, but they're not necessarily logical. You know, like some people just have, have, let's just take a fear of taking a chance. Like, okay, you take this chance, like what's the worst that could happen? And the worst that could happen is like, it doesn't work out. Okay. If it doesn't work out, then what? you know, what, what's the worst that can happen if it doesn't work out. So like really dissecting it to get to the root cause and then honoring whatever you need. So a lot of times I realize like when I go through this process, I realize I just have like a little bratty part of me that is throwing a temper tantrum because she's not getting what she wants. So once I get back to this bratty part of me, I'm like, okay, what is it that you need? What will make you happy right now? And usually just honoring whatever that is, and then I feel okay. So sometimes, and and I'm not going to say it's simple. It's not simple. It's not easy. But it's just having this process to bring yourself back to a place of self-awareness and peace. Sometimes you have to get to acceptance before you get to peace. So that self-awareness part is huge. That's the first step, being aware of what's actually going on and then getting to a place of neutrality, acceptance, and then peace. Okay. So number three is understanding people's capacity to hold space for you. So this is so important. And this is part of what I was talking to my friends today about, because I want to understand, like, I want to understand what their capacity is to be there for me, you know, like we could have needs and some people may not have the capacity to meet our needs and that is okay. So really starting the dialogue with the people in your life to know what they have the capacity for and what they don't and honoring that. So it's not like, oh, they don't have the capacity to do this for me or be, be there for me in this way. They suck. That's not the right way to go about it. (laughs) So having gratitude for the amount that they can be there for you, but understanding what that is, because sometimes if we, if we ask, let's just say, I'm going to give you an example. So let's just say you have a friend that is a hundred pounds. Okay. A hundred pounds is too skinny. Um, 140 pounds. Okay. You have a friend that's 140 pounds and you need your couch moved. And it's a huge couch, a cloud modular. That's the kind of couch I used to have. (laughs) So say you have this like huge couch and you have a friend that's 140 pounds. Does this friend have the capacity to help you lift this cloud modular, cloud modular couch? Probably not. 
So are you mad at this friend? You shouldn't be, you know, but someone who is, let's say, 240 pounds could lift that couch with no problem. So I say this to paint a visual of the fact that like some people have a, a, a different level of capacity in which they can hold space for you. So this, so the, the holding space could be, you know, when you have super heavy emotions or when you really need someone to talk to and you're a talker, I'm a huge talker. So some people can sit and listen to me for hours. Some people can't. So really understanding the people in your life and their capacity to hold space for you. And I will say this actually shows up in dating as well. One thing that I have learned, so all my ladies out there that are still single or dating, you haven't found your like person, person, and you, you know, may still be on the search for like your person. When a man, and I'm speaking to the ladies, but this goes for men as well with, you know, a woman they're dating. But when a man tells you, I've given all that I can give, I have no more to give, believe him the first time, believe him the first time. <laughs> Now, you will have some people that want to rise to the occasion and expand their capacity, but these days it's easier for people just to find other people who require less. And that goes across the board. That's not just dating. It goes with friends. Okay, this friend is asking for a lot, so I'm just going to find friends that don't require a lot. I've seen so many memes. I'm getting off topic, but I'm going to go on this rant. I've seen so many memes that are like, oh, I could just disappear for three months and show up like, hey, let's go out Friday. Like, shout out to the friends that are okay with that. Um, no, no. I'm like, no, I'm not that friend. You disappear for three months and you don't even ask me how I'm doing. And I'm talking about like my close friendships. Like, obviously you have Facebook friends and you have people, you have people that you don't actually have like in your life. They're not like your friend friends because I think that the word friend has gotten really watered down. But if you're a friend friend and you can't even just be like, hey, how are you? To me, that's a problem. So there are people that feel like I'm a super high maintenance friend. And you know what? I'm okay with that because I want connection. I want real connection. Like there's so many people that are craving connection, but they're succumbing to the societal norms and the memes that say like, oh, disappear for three months and, you know, pop up like, hey, what you doing Friday? Now for me, I reserve my time, especially my Fridays for people who are in my life. Now, granted, if someone lives across the country and they come in town or it's an old friend that I haven't spoken to, maybe I went to high school with, like there's different situations. But when you have people that are in your life on a regular basis, like the consistent people in your life, we have to communicate our needs and desires and not feel bad about it. And also understand their capacity for holding space for us. So I think that even in business, you have like, say you're a business owner and you hire employees and you have an employee that's like super, that requires a lot of extra training. A lot of times people are like ditching people to the side and then getting someone that they could pay less or do less for. Like, I feel like standards are at an all time low. And I'm using my platform to say we have to do better. We have to do better. We have to do better in friendships. We have to do better in romantic relationships. We have to do better in our connections, in our communication. People are communicating. Look, I'm on a rant now, you guys. I'm on a rant. People are communicating through text message. They're communicating through emojis and gifts. So people are not connecting how they used to. But then we wonder why so many people feel empty inside. We wonder why so many people feel dead inside because we're lacking connection. We are lacking the support and the love and the nurturing that we need to operate at our best because we are built for connection. So we are literally emotionally starving. Whew. Okay, you guys, I'm going to reel it back in because I went on a tangent. <laughs> Okay, so that, (laughs) 
let me bring it back. So I was going over the four ways and how we navigate this emotional starvation. Okay, so we were we were talking about number three, understanding people's capacity to hold space in your life, right? So number four is pay attention to your cup. So one of my favorite quotes is you can't pour from an empty cup. So you have to take care of you first. So, so I love that quote. So really understanding for yourself what it takes to fill your cup. So <clears throat> understanding the things that when this person does this, it fills my cup. So understanding your love languages. And, you know, I said in a previous episode that I don't want someone just to speak one love language to me or my primary and secondary language. I want them to speak all five. And I think that at different times in our lives, we're going to want that, you know, like we're going to want people to speak all five love languages at some point and from different people. So words of affirmation in a romantic relationship is my lowest love language, but words of affirmation in friendships is definitely higher. So really understanding that like, and and I know some people are like, oh, well, I don't care about gifts, but like if it's your birthday or if it's a wedding or whatever, like how can a person show you it? What basically what I'm saying is it varies. It varies. So really understanding what it takes to fill your cup, what it takes from others to fill your cup, what actions fill your cup, and then understanding what you can do to fill your own cup. So what self-love act, what self-care act can you do that fills your own cup? What is something that you're passionate about that is going to set your soul on fire? So I enjoy watching sunsets. Going to watch a sunset fills my cup. I enjoy dance. Going out to dance or taking a dance class or something movement-based definitely fills my cup. So getting really clear on the things that others can do for you that fills your cup and things that you can do for yourself that fills your cup. And then what the universe can do that fills your cup. So so when you feel like something happened that was sent from God or sent from the universe, what what is those types of happenings or shifts where you feel like this was the universe having my back? So getting clear on that And sometimes that could look like, you know, a seed that you planted a long time ago that is now blooming. So, you know, someone comes across your business and they offer you an opportunity. You find 20 bucks on the ground. You have some huge opportunity that came out of nowhere. You had some unexpected cash. So these are things that we feel like are God sent. So what are those things that can fill your cup. And when you get really clear on this, especially as as manifestors, when you get really clear on it and you show gratitude for those things and look for them, look for the things that fill your cup, that is going to bring more of it into your life because what we focus on grows. So focusing on the things that are filling your cup and even just like noticing things that we take for granted, you know, like what are things you take for granted that fill your cup that like you don't even pay attention to? Like maybe, maybe your partner fixes coffee for you every morning. You may take that for granted, but it literally fills your cup figuratively and literally. (laughs) Okay. I'm silly. Um, so yeah, just noticing the things that we take for granted. Okay, you guys, I have gone off on a tangent. So let me just do a really quick recap. So four ways that you can start to navigate emotional starvation. And like I said, if you make some of these shifts in your life, it is going to positively impact others and it will create a ripple effect of connection and love and support and nurturing. And it will literally make the world a better place. And I know that that probably sounds cheesy, but 
I really believe this. I believe the more that we connect back to ourselves, the more that we connect back to love, the more we're going to emit love out to others and the happier we're going to be. And right now we need it. There are so many people that are struggling and suffering in silence and so much depression, so much anxiety, so much people like masking their pain with drugs and alcohol and video games and gambling and sex. Like we have to get back to a place of peace. We have to get back to a place of joy. We have to get back to a place of love. And I believe like I'll have someone coming on soon talking about A Course in Miracles and it's all about returning to love because we are love. We are love. So them connecting us from our very essence is the problem. So these four steps will help you start to connect back to yourself and connect to others and build that connection in your life that we are craving. So number one is understanding your own emotional landscape. What is it that you truly desire? What is it that you need? What are your basic minimums? Like understanding that, what do you like? What do you don't like? Like what do you expect from the people in your life? So really peeling back the layers and getting super clear on that and being unapologetic about it, like honoring what you need. Number two is dissecting your limiting beliefs. We are programmed to think that like we have to be independent. We can't depend on anyone. Don't depend on a man. You have to have your own blah, blah, blah. So dissecting the limiting beliefs that are actually creating resistance and standing in the way of the things that you truly desire. Number three is understanding people's capacity to hold space for you in your life. So this honestly, like even just having the conversation about what friendship looks like, what partnership look, lo- looks like, what intimacy looks like, like having these conversations, what business partnership look looks like, having these conversations with people in your life is actually going to bring you closer understanding, you know, what, what does support look like for you? Asking that question to the people in your life is going to bring you closer. So it's really important that you start to understand people's capacity to show up and support you in your life. Okay. Number four is paying attention to your cup. What fills your cup? What can others do to fill your cup? And if you're clear on what others can do, to fill your cup, you can communicate that. It's all about communication and vulnerability. So getting clear on what you can do to fill your own cup, and then also just putting out there in a universe what the universe can do to fill your cup. And I've started having conversations like, okay, universe, I need something. Like, you gotta give me something to work with because I I work hard, you guys, like between all the different parts of my business and showing up and serving and living my purpose. And I realize when my cup is empty and I'm like, okay, universe, like we have to do something because my cup is empty. And if you want me to continue to serve and, and live my purpose, I need a little filling of the Niage cup. <laughs> All right, you guys, when I start getting silly, I know that's when it's time for me to sign off. (laughs) So I hope you found value in this. I would absolutely love to hear your feedback. So anytime you send me a message on Instagram and say this episode has changed your life, it literally makes my day. Sometimes I am like in the thick of it under a pile of, you know, to do lists like sending me that message, just knowing that this is making an impact in your life. It keeps me going. It keeps me going. So definitely let me know how you feel about this episode. If you know someone that needs to hear this, please share and honor what you need. Honor what you need. Open your heart to connection reach out to the people in your life to start the dialogue, to cultivate that connection because we need it. 
And if you are someone who is suffering in silence, reach out to people. You don't have to go at it alone. Reach out to me. I always try my best to provide support, even if it's just a podcast episode to listen to. Like That's why I create this so people know that they're not alone. You're not alone. I pour all of my wisdom and everything that I'm learning into these episodes so it's evergreen, so people can go back and listen to it. There's so much value here. Like one of the episodes that I mentioned today, episode 20, we're at episode 155. So you have so many episodes to refer back to. And I I cover so many different topics that will really help you overcome whatever life may be throwing at you. And if I haven't covered it, tell me and I will. <laughs> but I, I really want to create this space because I, I know I know that so many people are craving more love and more support and more acceptance and more belonging. And you're not alone. We all are. Whether we are courageous enough to admit it or vulnerable enough to admit it, you are not alone alone. So (sighs) thank you so much for listening. And until next time, be decadent. Thank you for tuning in to the Abundant Hack Show. I would love to hear from you. Leave your comments and questions and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our yummy episodes. Every time you leave a five-star rating or review, I do my happy dance. (laughs) 